Yeah, so we have we can have like a mid dot here, let's say, and we and then we can have make a mark of two point half radium. This is the radium of my circle. And I'm just gonna set my pencil here. It's important that your compass, you don't have to have these super duper compasses, but it's pretty important that you do, do have a very strong compass that is not moving all the time. So yeah, I'm gonna open it up to 2.5 centimeters of radium. And then I'm going to make this circle. And this is supposed to fix. Okay, this fits in here. <clears throat> Great. So we can make a much bigger circle. Sorry, guys. I have paint in my hand, and it's it's falling here. <clears throat> just for the right measures. So yeah, this is my midpoint and I have made a line for the radium. I can extend that to the outer circle. There's another circle here to just disregard that. And then we can get our transporter here. We align it the circle and then we can make a mark here with 90 degrees this is zero degrees 90 degrees and then i can repeat the same if you like i'm rotating the compass the transporter because it's not a 300 percent transporter okay and then i have I connect from the edge of this outer circle going through the center with these lines, see? So I have here a four mark, a four division for my disc. There are other ways to do that. You can eyeball it. I'm just, I just want to to have them some sort of methodology here for you. And then we have our horizontal line and we have ourselves a vertical line. And in here, what matters is that the disc doesn't, doesn't move. Okay, so I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, I don't know if it is a visual effect, but I still have the sensation, or let me see if the disc moved, because I'm still under the impression that this uh, vertical line, yeah, actually, I think it moved. So I'm just erasing the line, it's okay. I'm just adjusting here to the vertical line, and I'm gonna make a better, much better uh, vertical line, sorry. Yeah, because I think I moved here and yeah, my four divisions didn't look so precise. I think they are much better now. And we're gonna start dotting today. This design is gonna be much more about sushis and it's going to be really nice. So, I'm still using um, wood sticks, but feel free, for example, you can use a pencil or the back side of a brush. I'm going to go Today it's going to be much more about monochromatic colors and I'm going to start from light colors to 
darker colors. And right in the middle, I'm placing these bigger dots. Not too big. And I have to make sure it does cover all the areas equally. Then I can just with with this uh, wood stick, I'm just going to place small dots here. As you might remember, north, south, east, west. And today is going to be a mandala divided in four parts. So um, I'm still um, trying to figure out, I think I'm going to place a dot here in the middle of these two dots because I think we do have some sort of space. Oops. Happily, nothing bad really happened. And I'm gonna place, uh, I'm gonna be using the same tool, but I am just picking really little paints and I'm gonna make two dots, two super tiny dots here. in the middle and the secret here is gonna be all about as I've said in previous videos the amount of paint that I pick with this tool and it's gonna be about my control of my motor skills with the hands. I'm not saying it's going to be easy, it's not, probably not, but still we have to try. Look, these are really tiny dots. You can also feel free to use a needle if you think it's easier, okay? So today we're going to work much more about sushis. And um, we're gonna uh, be focusing on observation a lot. So I'm gonna be using the back side of the thinner wood stick and I'm gonna place a dot here. And I'm going to swoosh these dots My, um, let's say, arriving point is going to be right on top of this dot. Okay. Try to make this swoosh equal from one side to the other and it's straight. It is straight. It's not... Um, it's not that curvy here. This this swoosh needs to be uh, right here. It has to be straight. And also try not to make, uh, not to have, uh, to have this swoosh dry. Uh, by that I mean, try not to apply too much pressure against the surface. Instead, try to uh, yeah, swoosh the paint, but without touching the surface. Then look, we are going to think about in here, without making a circle of reference, by observation, we have more or less to set a dot here, and we're going to look at it, look at this distance from the edge to this big dots they have to be equal because this is going to be 
real basis for the other ones the other swooshes that I'm going to make so you have to make sure the top part of the swoosh does not exceed these dots that mark and then I'm going to place more paint because I don't want this this swoosh to look dry I want it to look wet yeah so my destination point is here and I'm just going to be like leading the paint carefully to that arriving point and I'm gonna make sure these swooshes they look very similar as perfect as possible on both sides they have to be curvy here but in here they go straight and I can rotate my piece and again I have to observe where the top part of the swoosh would be in here and with the back side I just place a dot full of paint and again I swoosh but I don't apply too much pressure against the surface and it's okay if you start uh, pressuring a lot it's normal you have to practice and practice and practice before you can actually <coughs> control your hand well same thing here I think the top part would be here and then I'm gonna place a dot right before so the top part does not exceed these and then I'm going to go down yeah I'm gonna go down here and I need to stop and observe my swooshes if one looks dry then you can always apply a little bit more of paint to it okay then uh, i'm gonna take another color here that is uh like the color of the orchid i'm gonna place some little paint and i'm gonna check consistency i think the consistency is quite okay normally for swooshes we want the paint to be slightly more liquid because it's gonna make it easier to swoosh i'm using in this case um the medium pouring from pebble but as always, I say, feel free to use the one that is best for you. I just want, this paint was okay for dotting. It was creamy enough, but I want it creamy and a slightly more uh, liquid. Okay. Yeah, and then I'm going to use this, um, the same one, but I'm going to pick much less paint. Okay. And I'm gonna place the dots at the same height, two dots at the same height. See, they're gonna be at the same height. And, um, Maybe this one a little bit closer. I'm gonna just going to make, put more paint. And then I'm gonna swoosh, but I'm gonna swoosh like this. I'm going to be con continuing this curve. I'm not going to go all the way down. Okay. And in here, it's gonna be more curvy. It's not gonna be straight. Yeah, I'm going to be respecting the curve that I have here 
from the center remember to swoosh uh, the paint if you if we apply lots of pressure then there will be marks of of the point uh, of the of the stick and that's what i don't want so yeah i want to i want you to to observe that this part is not that straight it's slightly curvy okay i'm following here and i don't go all the way down i'm gonna repeat this in here i'm gonna pick some paint less than uh, and i'm gonna apply some pressure but the dot is not gonna be that big it has to be smaller they have to be at an equal distance from the center swoosh and they have to be at the same height then i continue with this shape and in here i just make it a little bit curvy but i'm not that straight there's a slight curve here and here okay this is not as equal as that one they are not as similar as i would like them to be but it's okay and we do the same here it's important that these two dots do not go lower they have to be at the same height and then um, also the dot cannot be as big Okay, and there you go. When we go down, we, as we go down, we, um, the idea is that we go further away from the surface. Our hand has some pressure. Yeah, and then we have to observe, for example, this is not, maybe this could go a little bit lower. See, okay. Same thing here. Now we're going to create another shape here. It's going to be very nice. Now I'm taking another pink. Uh, do you see these pinks that I am using? They are not like a bubblegum pink. They are a little bit more, I don't know, nostalgic. They give me the sensation of more, much more nostalgic in the system. And this paint is quite much more thick. It's thicker, indeed. Yeah, and when this happens, remember from the other videos, we need to... Then we just uh, have some more... Um, Let's see how it goes only with the medium. Maybe I will need a little bit more of water, but I'm just gonna apply some more medium flow. Yeah. 
and yeah i think this paint has some um has become really thick and there are some um solid parts here that i really want to avoid going to the paint because it's gonna destroy the paint yeah but i think this consistency is great i'm just setting aside um paint that really got solid on the way and i'm just going to clean this and come back okay now it's clean and st i'm still uh allocating the dots at the same height of these other dots i just want you to see this effect okay and then what is going to happen here is that i must give i must continue this shape But now I'm gonna go further, a little bit further and along the way, just like that. Just a little bit. I don't go down all the way. Just like this. And then I have to be checking the distances, okay? It's important that we check distances. Yeah, I'm gonna place a little bit more paint here and here. And remember that you have to go with the flow of the curves. And it's also important that do, you do acknowledge the fact that we are working and all these items are at the same height. It's pretty important. These spaces will give me room for for another sort of shape that we are going to create here. Good. Okay, let's move to the next part. Now I'm gonna be using magenta, magenta color. And as before, sometimes, um, I don't know, I, I think it's just the pain that it, it gets, it's getting old, it's, and I don't know why they have this, solid items maybe from from the lid so i'm using medium flow just to to help out okay and then uh remember that it's important to keep as 
um, uh, to keep your paint as as uh, probably a creamy but light so you can swoosh better see and then we're gonna place the dots here and now we go all the way down And feel free to clean your your tool as you want. Sorry, I think it's not easy to see what I'm doing. But what I'm doing here, I am following this um, shape that I have here. And now I'm going all the way down. See, I, I must uh, check the distance. See, this I'm getting closer. It's important to look at the heights of where you're placing the, your dots. And try to keep uh, because it's pretty interesting then it starts looking this shape and it's important that they look really alike and that we keep symmetry we go all the way down you can make them um, fatty or you can make them really thin as you like see how beautiful shade we're getting here so yeah same height here we clean yeah i, I get uh, more pain than my pieces do i'm totally fine with that see um, yeah and we keep doing this it's pretty relaxing absolutely relaxing and it's a lot of observation too we get to observe um, many things here symmetry we get to observe shapes we get to observe curves uh, lines curves are lines just curvy lines straight lines distances yeah look how beautiful it looks doesn't it now we can uh, do many other things, like for example, we can um, always set a me dot here that could be with the orchid color just to have a contrast. And what I like about sushis is that you can adapt them, um, you know, as you like. There's no, uh, like, a fixed set of rules. We can have just one dot here. Okay, and then maybe we could have, I'm thinking here, completely out loud, maybe with a barrel white color. We could have another dot here, a bigger one. 
I'm just letting it go with a flow totally um, not planned for anything just letting it go yeah and I mean we could maybe do with same color we could have peacock very simple peacock here here fully aligned to the left And this is our mini mandala number seven. I hope you have enjoyed this video.